If you're a fan of steampunk-like settings, darker stories, high fantasy with inventive use of magic weapons and fantasy technology, go check out my novel Chronicles of Everfall Shadow of the Conqueror, the tale of a deposed tyrannical emperor who embarks on a journey towards redemption. On Audible, it's rated at 4.6 out of 5 stars from over 4,600 ratings. Available in print, ebook, and audiobook, the audiobook narrated by Michael Kramer and Kate Redding, the very same narrators who brought The Wheel of Time, Mistborn, and The Stormlight archives to life. It's a wild ride and a confronting story, so do go check it out. Greetings, I'm Shad, and I've just finished watching Arcane, a League of Legends animated TV series, and holy crap was it good! Oh my goodness, it's probably the best thing I've seen since Invincible, and I think it might even be better than Invincible. It was really good. It's like fresh water in a drought of a lot of bad shows lately. So with how much I enjoyed it, I want to actually discuss a bit about the weapons that we see in, uh, uh, in Arcane, and uh, how effective would they be, also trying to understand the context that they're in, and what would they be like if they existed in the real world, just for fun, okay? Now, I understand we're dealing with magic and other things like that. Hextech. But there's a surprising amount of realism and practicality, and also how they're depicted in the fights quite well. And so, some of the weapons we'll be looking at, we'll be looking at uh, Vi's kind of punchy weapons. She uses smaller ones, which are kind of like Cestus, uh, and then she gets a big upgrade, and there's no real name for or re struggle reference for a weapon of that, like your metal robotic gloves, basically. But then we also see Jace's massive hammer. We'll also look at Savika's kind of robot arm weapon, as well as uh, I have some comments on Jinx's Gatling gun. So one of the more prominent weapons is, of course, Vi's, and she starts out with, yeah, like they look like Cestus. They're basically metal things that you hold over your fists, so instead of hitting with your knuckles, you're hitting with raw steel. And, uh, okay, so Overall, in reality, that is not a wholly effective weapon for a, a number of reasons. Now, of course, I'm not saying it doesn't work well for the show or the character or things like that. Things might change when they get upgraded. But there's a couple of things that uh, don't really uh, help it reach the levels of advantage you could get if you're using uh, a, a, a weapon that gives you a better leverage, a better penetration, more reach, a, a, any number of things. Now, of course, it enables her to block incoming strikes better. It also adds weight to her strikes, and we actually see that in the animation. When she puts these things on, they're almost throwing her around a bit. Her, her uh, movements are a bit slower, but they are hitting with a lot of force, and so it's giving her weight, which means more force, because momentum is a combination of mass and velocity, and so she's added mass, going a bit slower, but I think it, it still goes out in a net positive to her because when you have mass it also increases kind of the driving force and inertia of the strike on top of that. And then of course hitting with metal which is a lot more solid than knuckles covered in flesh where you can injure yourself. So all that, yeah that's good okay and for a brawler, someone like that, I could see why they would want to add it. Now, again, even though I'm going to be, uh, you know, talking objectively about this type of weapon and how advantages and disadvantages, I still love the show, and I think it suits Vi's character and the build-up of where she goes with her upgrade later on. And the upgrade could work... Like, there's, there's more positive to talk about what the upgrade is giving her in regards to these Cestus kind of punching weapons. But some of the problems with it is, like, the surface area of what she's actually hitting with is pretty broad, and that distributes the force over that entire surface, which means it doesn't have as much penetrative power, all right? If you were able to put that same amount of force into a really fine acute point or edge, well, that'd be far more lethal, basically. And we see that with kind of punch daggers and things like that. And so if they were actually wanting a weapon that would be far more lethal, you'd be seeing blades kind of added to it. And this is the question, because these are not necessarily Vi's weapons, they're Vander's weapons. And the question is, does Vander want to be lethal? These weapons could be dedicated, kind of uh, non-lethal weapons, that could knock someone out a lot easier than your bare fist. And I mean, a good solid punch in the guts with one of these things would really knock the wind out of someone. And that might be their whole purpose. And so in the realms of non-lethal weapons, okay, I, I actually give it far more credit, but in terms of wholly lethal weapons that have the capacity to incapacitate someone much easier with less force and gives you more leverage and is a better force multiplier, these weapons have a lot of limitations. Now, there are some interesting kind of weapons that do exist in the world that 
are affixed to kind of the forearm and then s the striking end is projecting forward from the fist. We see like punching daggers, but also there's uh, actual swords that are constructed the same. They're called patters or gauntlet swords. I have a video on gauntlet swords because the interesting thing is that they limit your range of motion. Having a weapon that's actually going forward out of the fist isn't necessarily the best option. And I'll have more to say about that when we talk about Savika's uh, kind of upgraded version of her robot arm. So that's basically the commentary on the first kind of weapons we see Vi using. Uh, they're not really uh, lethal, and perhaps they're not even meant to be lethal, but they have limitations because there's a reason why we usually have weapons on sticks. Why? Because sticks are amazing, they're great weapons, they're so, so incredible already, uh, but why six? Well, it's because leverage, okay? By having a striking end on a lever, uh, your motion is amplified because whatever motion you do here, the tip of that lever is moving even faster. And then if you put a weight or a blade or something on the end of that, even better. And swords do essentially operate in the same kind of principle and the entire end is offensive because it can cut. But also a sword by concentrating force onto a small surface area, you can actually do lethal damage with far little force. Like literally you can put a pl press a blade against someone and just push it in and uh, that uh, without much effort and that can kill someone especially slicing pushing and draw cuts very very effective so there's a reason why blades are quite commonly used in regards to weapons blades points you know you see a lot of varieties it's not to say blunt weapons didn't exist you know we see war hammers and maces and things but what are they made like they're put on the end of levers to get the better force multiplying kind of actions. You don't see many weapons historically that are actually on the fist. They're usually held or moved away or somewhere, somehow suspended away from the fist to get leverage and uh, therefore far more damage. But then Vi gets quite a significant upgrade. It's not really a spoiler because I mean it's shown in some of the promotional material and if you know anything about League of Legends, anything like that. Uh, by the way, it's funny, I've always been attracted to League of Legends because of the diversity of characters. Uh, uh, except I've, I started with Dota and it's hard to, you know, old dog, new tricks, it's hard to change over. Uh, but I always have felt that League of Legends have had well and truly better characters than in Dota. Dota is the same type of a game, it's a MOBA, multiplayer online battle arena, uh, and so very similar to League of Legends, but the characters always look really great, especially the cinematics, and so this really shows it, I think, in the show when they present these characters in their backstories, like, oh, it's really good. Uh, so, no real spoiler if you ever knew Vi as a playable character in League of Legends, and uh, yeah, she gets basically mechanized, magic-enhanced, massive gauntlet things. Now, I've seen this type of fantasy weapon before. One example is in the Battle Chasers comic, actually. I think there's this little girl who gets these, like, these gauntlets of strength, um, and they magically enhance her strength, but they're huge. They look really, really big. Uh, so with Vi, these uh, kind of mechanized gauntlet glove things <laughs> basically are for punching, but they you see kind of like the, the fist rearrange and move a bit, and it, it almost looks like the fist goes down a little bit, and it gets kind of retracted into the gauntlet, and then when on impact, there's a mechanical kind of push of the fist that launches it out, even by that much. Now, you might think that distance isn't very much, but on impact, if you have a mechanized kind of push, even by that much, that has huge force behind it, and I think these gauntlet things do, that can cause insane damage, like really increase the force of the impact by a large amount. And there also seems to be like shock absorbers built into this thing, and so this could really increase the uh, power of the punching, far more so than just being limited to punches. And this is where the surface area punches might also help. Before I go into to further details about how the surface area with extra force behind it could be beneficial, there is a bit of an elephant in the room that I do want to address about these gauntlets. And I th look, I think it's ultimately answered, not explicitly in the show, but implied fairly strongly. And uh, in reality, these would be ridiculous weapons, but we're not ta talking about reality, we're talking about fantasy with magic, and that's why I'll, I'll explain a bit. But pretend if there's no magic, these would be horribly inefficient weapons, because look at how big and heavy they are, all right? The, a person wearing these things would barely be able to lift the, uh, the glove itself, let alone fight adequately and fast with them. Yet, they seem, they, there's weight to them, but... Vi isn't limited in motion too much. And we even see Jace wear one of these things and pick up 
an actual like boulder, a big flipping rock. So this is implying something, and it's that these gauntlets actually enhance someone's overall physical abilities, their, their strength. They are magically enhanced because these are magical items, essentially. Because these things didn't have that magical enchantment, not only would you not be able to lift them, I mean, lifting you know, anything else on top of it would be a big problem. You'd need like a full exoskeleton that is connecting the gauntlet to your body and then supporting the weight through the exoskeleton skeleton into the ground because the amount of extra weight just with the gauntlets alone on your spine and legs would be excessive like they're basically unusable if not for this magical kind of enchantment which is not said but basically shown in the show by that scene with Jace where he just picks up the, he Jace wouldn't be able to pick up that boulder without the gauntlet he puts on the gauntlet now I can pick it up this is pretty much showing there is a magical enchantment of enhancing strength one, mitigating the weight of the gauntlets themselves, and two, increasing the strength of the wielder. Uh, except if they could pick up a boulder like that and then crush it, oh boy, but that's like not just the power in the mechanical, you know, gauntlet fist itself to crush the rock, but the amount of weight is then support. Like if you held a rock out like that on your arm, you're supporting it on your shoulder and your spine and your legs. I. Uh, if you tried to do that without any magical hands or something like that, you'll probably break your back and shoulder in the process. It would be that heavy. So clearly, this that's enhanced Jace's strength, and that's what's happening to Vi as well. So these are strength-enhancing devices with some other really interesting magical effects and features as well. So going back to how we kind of see them operating. There are parts to it that kind of rearrange, re-click, move and stuff. Steam kind of shoots out of it. And one of the impressions I got is that the actual fist itself was kind of, uh, you know, almost extending a bit on impact to increase the power of the strike. And there might be extra magical force put behind it as well, because we see almost like energy explosions, but that could be just be for animated flair, but it could be actual magical types of energy behind these impacts as well. I do admit, this is the thing, um, I felt the fight between, minor spoiler, there's a fight between uh, Vi and Savika, and I think, well actually look, I'll just avoid the spoiler, because if you want um, an actual proper breakdown review of Arcane, well I'll be doing that on my other channel, Night's Watch, uh, and it might already be out by the time this video comes out on Shadowversity, so please uh, go check it out, subscribe, you'll get to see some of my in-depth thoughts and feelings on uh, Arcane, just reviewing it uh, overall, but also, oh man, we are reviewing Wheel of Time episode by episode. We'll be, we're also uh, starting Cowboy Bebop, we're going to be doing Hawkeye, and so uh, in depth reviews, roundtable discussions with my other knights to get different perspectives. And we end up, it's really great because they bring up things I didn't think about, and then we get into a discussion, we find points, and we get to cover more things than I would have remembered if it was just on myself, by myself. And so, really, really cool. Subscribe to Knights Watch to see that there. So there are times when Vi, she is struggling too much when she has this enhancement. Her strength should be enhanced, her, the, uh, the damage she's doing should be far greater, and uh, she fights someone that she fought without the gauntlets, and in that fight they were evenly matched. And then she gets this huge upgrade, and I think she should have done much better trying to avoid spoilers. Uh, you'll get to see it if you watch Arcane yourself. Because her strength is enhanced, and then the impact, she's, she's able to crush so many things with the punching because this is where I think having a wider surface area might actually be a benefit. It's a detriment when you're only dealing with the strength of yourself and you have cestuses and you're not able to focus the damage to penetrate and do more lethal hits and things like we saw with the cestus kind of punching things. But with this, with the magical enhancement, okay, spreading the force over a wider area means you are able to offend or impact larger surfaces overall. So if you actually want to crush and destroy things and break through things, that's why hitting something with a hammer is far more effective than hitting with a sword, okay? A hammer is able, one, has more weight, concentrate on a small end, granted, but if you want to break something instead of pierce something, you hit it with a flat surface and not a pointed or edged surface. Now, this is not to say that pointed things like picks can't break things, but in terms of truly trying to shatter something and inflict the most damage onto an object, a flat surface with a lot of force behind it will generally do the job better. And so with these weapons, Weapons, yeah, I think Vi, like, if she just wants to destroy things, especially breaking apart metal, perhaps mechanical kind of enemies, monsters, armoured opponents and things, which there are armoured opponents uh, or bad guys in the show, 
okay, wider surface area on these mechanical fists, far more plausible and justifiable, especially with the magical enhancement. And so these would be truly devastating and also effective magical weapons. And so that's why for a fantasy setting, they are far more plausible because they're founded on magic and they're able to do such levels of force. And I kind of give the same analogy with my analysis of Mjolnir, uh, Thor's hammer, in one of my other pop culture weapons analyze videos, because uh, Thor is able to do these big wide hits, spread energy and stuff like that. And it seems like Vi is able to do the same thing. And for that purpose, larger surface area works well, fists good, pretty cool. And then, because this is the other thing, I think one of the main reasons they pick this type of weapon is not for its effectiveness. It just looks really cool. It's kind of a cool, fun idea. But I love it when cool, fun ideas can be sold more logically. And I think it has. I think Arcane did a good job of justifying these weapons for how they're used. And then there are other kind of magical effects there. I think she even is able to generate a shield to block something at some point. Um, so there's even more interesting effects that these gauntlets give her. So cool, I, I actually love it. I think it's great, and it's she's a great character, and it goes back into the whole League of Legends have really fun character designs. That's always been a thing that I've found very appealing about the property, and uh, that's why I'm kind of annoyed that I'm so hooked on Dota, because <laughs> I do have to betray Dota to convert to League. Dota has better graphics. Know. We'll see. Uh, so, okay, really cool character designs. And uh, so now let's go to one of the other main prominent weapons that we see in this series, and this is Jace's Hammer. So, it's a giant hammer. We see giant hammers in fantasy often before, and something that many of us all point out is that they'd be way too heavy to even lift. Like, if you actually had a solid metal hammer of that size, no, you wouldn't even be able to lift it. Um, Michael Cthulhu, who makes really big giant weapons, love his stuff, okay. It might have been a hammer that one of the magic uh, planeswalkers used. I can't remember where it came from, but he made like this fantasy hammer and it wasn't like half as big as the ones we see in fantasy, especially Jace's hammer. It was crazy heavy. Of course, we're dealing with magic. And this is where we come to that interesting point because we see you shown quite clearly that there is some type of weight mitigating magic on the gauntlets itself, and then it goes further than that and increases Vi's strength on top of it because we saw Jace lift the boulder. So we can then logically kind of intuit conclude that there is a weight mitigating magic on the hammer as well. Now, this would be contradicted if we see characters later in the series using as big weapons without some type of magical explanation. And in League of Legends, just the characters that generally, I do think there are characters that are just supposedly, well, when you say regular people, these are like heroic people, and perhaps they have if they have superhuman strength, that's fine. Vi, she is almost at a superhuman level, and then she gets magical enhancement on top of it, but there might be other characters that just have superhuman strength, because there are some huge weapons, like the, some of the swords we see in the League of Legends cinematics that might be appearing in later uh, series in Arcane, they're huge! <laughs> and so I would like an explanation to explain if someone's that either have to be super strong or a magical mitigating thing would be nice, and that's what we can assume with Jace's hammer. I was surprised at how good Jace was in the fight, we didn't really see him training too much beforehand. Uh, now, as a weapon by itself, if you had something that enabled you to just lift it, interesting thing, I wonder, because if something were, had this effect that I'll explain, this could be really, really cool. Because what if the magic makes a hammer usable for Jace, uh, like enough to actually lift it, but for everyone else, for how it interacts with everyone else, it weighs as much as a, uh, its size indicates, which is like probably half a ton or something. It would be crazy heavy. Because if the actual weapon was that heavy and he can swing it around, it would be a crazy deadly. Just the force behind it would be off the scale. Then, of course, it has magical enhancement and perhaps it can increase the impact force just magically as well. But, of course, the hammer isn't just a hammer. A hammer is able to do some other really cool things. It can generate a protective shield, and it's also basically a massive magical cannon. It just shoot the like it actually it sh turns into this big cannon and you just start blasting people, which is hey versatility options, and it makes me want to like 
if, if it can be a cannon, why don't you just lead with that? That would be the kind of the primary use, you'd think. Uh, ranged attacks, generally uh, more preferable than close melee attacks because you're more vulnerable to being hit back. If you can take someone out at a distance, that's a better option. So is there a limit on uh, the amount of charges he has, or ammunition? Can he only shoot it a certain number of times and then he has to use it or reserve it for the times he really needs it? That would explain it. Or does the magical blast actually do less damage and he can do vastly more damage with the hammer when he hits with it? And, uh, and so the blasting, you know, cannon side is a bit of a backup hit him at range, but if you really need to do heavy serious damage, taking out people and less strikes, like just so instantly, Oh, then he would want to use it as a hammer more regularly. That one's not really explained in the show because we don't get to see the hammer too much. Perhaps we'll get to see more of it later on. But overall, because it is fantasy, again, it's one of those times when you can justify it because we see things in the show that's explaining it. This is kind of different to, say, the film version of World of Warcraft or the hammer that uh, Gendry gets in um, Game of Thrones and stuff with that. The hammer thing is just... One, it's really weirdly designed and it's excessively big and you'd barely be able to lift it. And there's nothing explaining magic or being able to hold it in Game of Thrones, especially in Game of Thrones. Uh, in Warhammer, some people say the people are just generally stronger, that's why they get stronger weapons and stuff, but really the people, are, like, if they had regular strength, those swords are so disgustingly oversized that you'd barely be able to lift it. It's crazy. But in this show, we do get in-world shown explanation, not ex described, shown. And okay, so I can accept it, of course, a lot easier. It's easy to suspend your disbelief. I, I really like, dislike the disingenuous kind of thing where it says it's fair, like they're shooting magic and everything like that. That's unrealistic. So, of course, why are you getting bent out of shape with uh, the hammer? Because magic is a law that they establish in the universe that is explained. Magic exists and it can do the things that we're shown it doing. But guess what else exists? The laws of physics and weight, all right? They're operating in the same rules as we understand it. And so I would be just as annoyed if the series shows them breaking the rules of their magic as much as if they showed them breaking the laws of physics that they have already demonstrated are in existence in the world. That's how you can get bent out of shape in those things because there is suspension of disbelief and your suspension, your suspension of disbelief is measured by the rules that the show establishes by what it demonstrates. So, I... Let's get past that, all right? Of course you can get bent out of shape, like justifiably so with a poorly designed weapon that is ineffective, too heavy and stuff like that. That isn't explained even if worlds with magic. Uh, so overall, I like the hammer because it's justified, it works well, it's got some interesting effects and it would be devastatingly effective. So now we come to Savika, who initially it's a, uh it's a robot hand, essentially. It's a gear punk, steampunk kind of hand that is, uh, seems to run off of shimmer, which is a type of drug in this world. And it's hard to tell. She's getting somewhat, you know, physically enhanced from the shimmer, but it seems to also be fueling the actual mechanical hand as well. I don't know how that works. There, are, there are, There's a lot of world building elements that aren't explained. It actually adds more of a mystery to the overall show, but there are some confusing things like, well, how is certain things working here and there? But I, it's so far no massive contradictions that I notice in regards to the magic and how things are working. But it is strange, like, what is Shimmer doing? Because it's used in a lot of different ways. But okay, she has a robot hand. She's obviously enhanced physically somehow because of the Shimmer, uh, and uh, the robot hand seems to be stronger. It's just, uh, it doesn't seem to be like enhancing the punching too much. Vi is hitting it, she's getting hit by it, she's surviving. It seems to mostly be operating the same kind of strength levels that the character is operating in. For the first fight, at least, there is an upgrade later on, and uh, it's not really a spoiler because it's just weapon upgrades, I'm not telling anything revealing about the story and stuff, but she adds a, a blade, a blade that projects almost through the middle of the, you know, these these two fingers, uh, straight out like that, and it becomes almost like a gauntlet sword, but it's not really a gauntlet yet. It's a metal hand, so you don't need to protect it, and so she can block with it and things like that. Uh, and she, you know, tries to use that with lethal intent in the show, and that certainly increases her lethality because that thing can chop through metal and stuff. It's a devastating upgrade. There are limitations to that type of weapon, as I've explained in other videos. Less range of motion. There are literally angles that it's really awkward to get at with it, but 
you actually get an interesting amount of leverage in the strikes as well. So it's not a terrible thing. I mean, this is why the Gauntlet Sword does exist. It is, uh, uh, you know, a weapon that has levels of effectiveness, okay? It's not a wholly ineffective weapon, but there are limitations to it. Uh, are the limitations justified enough to... Uh, for me to want a different design because another design is, a, is kind of like a blade that sh shoots out from the hand that way but then curves up it curves up and then you can grab it like a regular sword but it's like on a gear or lever we kind of see this in one of the assassin creed daggers where the dagger shoots forward but then can curve down and you can grab it in like an ice pick grip well this would kind of be reversed it shoots out then then shoots up and you can grab it like a regular sword and then rotates down back in. That would actually be a far more effective design because it gives you more range of motion, better leverage in certain situations, sometimes less leverage, granted, but there is a reason why most swords are held and not fixed, even though there are examples, I agree. But still, range of motion is very important in terms of defense and attack to get the sword in the right position, because if there is an angle that you could have defeated your opponent on that you weren't able to get the sword on because the way it's fixed your hand, it's a big limitation. You could have won the fight. Now, is that really needed though? Because it's got a great look and stuff, and it's certainly got a level effect, just like the Gauntlet Sword, so perhaps it isn't. I'm a bit on the fence. I'm just suggesting another possible option that could have worked, I feel, just as well, but then have less limitations. But still, overall, devastating weapon, really cool, and uh, overall, it's got a great design. And the animation in Arcane is some of the most beautiful I've ever seen. There are levels of just polish in this show that are astounding. The animation, the choreography, the, the expression, just the movement of the character. Like, there are better movements in this and animation, more realistic and believable motions that convey weight than I've seen in live action shows. I'm not kidding. Like when uh, Vi puts on those, uh, those Cestus things that Vander had, you feel the weight in them. And they convey the weight in it better than I've seen in live action shows than when they're just using like props. That's astounding and also a big compliment to the show. So there's a lot of praise for the show and we'll do a more detailed breakdown on Night's Watch. So go subscribe to check that out. And for the last weapon I kind of want to discuss is uh, uh, Jinx's Gatling Gun because this is one of the few examples in the show where I think they get the weight wrong. Uh, to begin with, all right, Jinx, she doesn't necessarily have superhuman strength or powers or abilities. We don't really see any indication that she is on Shimmer. And now, I'm no spoilers, but for most of the show, no superhuman abilities. Now, she shows the weight of the Gatling gun like at points where she has to kind of get it in position and she's leaning back to count. And the, like, so there's good examples, but then there are ba bad examples. But uh, uh, pointing out a good example is when she's shooting it, okay, she's holding it out in front of her. Now, if you just held it out in front of you like that, it'll tip your point of balance and fall forward. So to counteract it, you have to lean back really heavily like that. Uh, and then you're balanced on either end. And they show her doing that at times when she's shooting it, which is great. Yet there are other times where she's holding it, and this is a heavy, big piece of machinery, all right? It's a thick, big Gatling gun, and she's walking like it's nothing, like it's not even there. There's a lot of times where she's walking with that Gatling gun, and it, it's like, well, how much is that thing supposed to weigh? There are times when she pulls it out, it's like, where did it come from? Uh, she had it hidden, but then there are other times where they do convey the weight, and so that's uh, a little bit inconsistent. And as I, I could, so it would be justified if there was a type of magic counterbalance and stuff that we see in the show, but this is an example in the show where it's not done. And I think it's perfectly valid to just point out that this is re unrealistic, even in a show with magic and stuff, because it's breaking one of the kind of established rules that they're showing in the show, okay? And I would complain just as much if they break one of the rules of, what, of the magic. Yet it's really hard to define what those rules are because the, it's funny, they might be doing it on purpose. So if you don't know the rules, it's hard to get pulled out of it when the magic does something against the rules because you don't know what the rules are, of course. Uh, they might be doing that on purpose. But then it also adds a mystery element. Yet, you know, it, all, it, all, it makes me concerned about are they just having magic do whatever they want? Like what are the limitations? Like, it seems like magic works on runes somewhere. We don't know what the runes are. Um, but so far, honestly, I, I can't think of many criticisms. I'll probably watch it again and see if there are anything. But uh, overall, just on a casual watching, magic in this setting is more of a mystery. It's a kind of, uh, you know, unknown ethereal thing. They're trying to delve what could they do with magic. And then when they unlock certain things, 
That establishes a rule. Magic can do X, okay? We can have hex gates and stuff. Uh, it can mitigate some weights in weapons and things and uh, enhance certain properties. So there are some rules in what we see, and for the most part, I don't see too many contradictions on those ones. So overall, I do like it. I think the magic was done mostly acceptable, and but the show is just brilliant. The characters and stuff. And this was a more uh, deeper dive on some of the primary weapons specifically. Share some of your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to read them. Uh, and because, of course, I didn't cover all the weapons, just kind of the main ones. Are there some weapons that you're really interested in seeing appear from other characters in League of Legends? Because I certainly hope they're going to be doing a season two. And if they do, I'll look at some of those weapons as well. I hope to see you there. So until that time, fair luck.